Doctor Strange might be able to enter the mirror dimension, dark dimension, and astral plane, but he also successfully transcended to a new level of existence that is just as impressive, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you're not a sorcerer's apprentice yourself, though, you might have missed some of the finer details of the film's finale. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Here's the ending of Doctor Strange explained. The Secret of the Eye don't tell Thanos, but the Eye of Agamotto is actually an Infinity Stone. The Time Stone, to be precise. For those of you keeping score at home, that's the fifth of the six Infinity Stones to appear in a Marvel movie so far. The Mind Stone is in Vision's forehead, the Power Stone is held by the Nova Corps, the Space Stone is in Asgard's vault, and the Reality Stone is with the Collector. And since Thanos needs all six to complete his Infinity Gauntlet, that means Doctor Strange is on a collision course with the biggest baddie in the known universe. Pretty sweet. The Broken Watch. Sorry, Dr. Palmer but after the film's first 20 minutes, it was safe to say that Stephen Strange will always be married to his work, not you. Nevertheless, he still wears the watch she gave him in order to remember that great gal who stuck by his side, even back when he was acting like a total Sherlock. There are other things that can give your life meaning. Like what? Like you? And this is the part where you apologize. But that's not all the watch symbolizes. The shattered face broken in his car accident is a reminder of how pride goeth before a fall, while the inscription on the back also prompts Strange to use the time-reversing powers of the Eye of Agamotto to defeat Dormammu. The watch may be broken, but thanks to its many meanings, the Earth is still ticking. The Sanctum Sanctorum Castilius and his cronies destroyed the London Sanctum, ruining a good portion of Karmataj in the process. And while the Hong Kong Sanctum was saved with all that time trickery, it still took a severe beating courtesy of Dormammu's henchmen. So at the end of the movie, it appears that Doctor Strange has decided to abandon the Ancient One's tradition of living in Tibet, and instead has made New York his full-time headquarters, just like in the comics. He probably just wanted better broadband. Uh, what's this, my mantra? The Wi-Fi password. We're not savages. Succeeding the Sorcerer Supreme With the Ancient One gone, the World Heavyweight title of Sorcerer Supreme has basically been passed down to the Doctor's broken hands. And whether or not it's official, he's definitely earned it. He stopped Cassilius, came to a stalemate with Dormammu, he fixed the Hong Kong Sanctum, he was chosen by the Cloak of Levitation, and he saved the planet. He still maintains vigilance over Karmataj and the New York Sanctum to boot. And according to the mid-credits scene, he's already fulfilled his duties by safeguarding Earth from threats like Loki. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Baron Mordo So why did Baron Mordo turn his back on Doctor Strange at the end, and then turn into a straight-up villain in the post credit scene? Because it was fated, not by a magic prophecy, but by the comics. Just like in the movie, comic book Mordo was the Ancient One's apprentice, but he eventually went bad and became Doctor Strange's archenemy. Based on the post credit scene, it seems like movie Mordo is going down the same path, meaning we expect to see a lot more of him in the sequel, as a bad guy. This wasn't clever, it was suicide! Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch more videos like the one you just saw. And don't forget to check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.